starts when he says, I'm Ted Dutton's driver. <laughs> Ted just had eye surgery. I'm Ted Dutton's driver. And my recollection is, we agreed on this date, but you know, <laughs> next time, tell Deb, you should stay there. Send her here. We'll have a <laughs> Um, those of you who know me know I've got a pretty wicked sense of humor. Those who don't, if I offend you, I'm really sorry. Um, but I used to represent this area. I'm not running again. So if something I say offends you, take it up with your supervisor. <laughs> who is Robert Lovingood? Let me tell you a great story about Robert Lovingood. Um, the last event I was at, um, the last political event I was at in this county was down at, uh, at the New York Grill in Ontario, and a couple of the supervisors were there. And the current chair of the Board of Supervisors, Janice Rutherford, um, got up and made a comment about your supervisor. She said that it was early one morning, and she got a text from Robert, which arrived about 4.15, 4 4.16 in the morning. And she got up and proceeded to tell Robert that she only recognized one four in the day, and it was four in the afternoon. <laughs> and she wasn't awake at 4.15, but your supervisor was. And uh, I heard that. The next morning, I woke up a little early, and about 5.02, I sent your supervisor and Chairman Rutherford an email saying, just want to let you know I'm up. <laughs> Did not hear from Supervisor Rutherford, Rutherford, but Robert pinged me right back. I'm up working for the citizens of the high desert, too. <laughs> so it's, um, first of all, let me just say, I think you're very fortunate to have not only um, Joe, but Robert. They're a great combination fighting for this region. And it's critical that we fight for this region. Because our state, our state's still sick. We're healing, but we're still sick. You know, my friends in... Los Angeles and in Sacramento and the Bay Area like to talk about how we've created more jobs than some of the other states. And I think, well, that's great, but you know, unemployment's still 10% in this state. And in my county, we kill for 10% unemployment. There is a lot of work to do to keep rebuilding the California economy. Um, I was asked to talk a little bit about the future of California. And um, those of you who know me, know that uh, when I left the Senate in 2004, I thought I was going to be done with politics. Um, I've been a public servant most of my life, so for the last few years I've been in the wealth creation stage. Um, I don't get one of those cushy government pensions. Um, I sure wish I did, but, but I don't, so I've got to put my own money away for retirement. But I was so concerned after the last election um, that I said it's, it's time to get back in the game. Um, because the future of California is, is very, very important. Now, for let me just show of hands. Um, you all know I'm a Republican. How many of you are not a member of my political party? Just so I'm... Only one? Only two? Well, I know you are. Fred, I hired you for prime health care. I know who you are. Only two of you? Three of Well, Frank. Okay, four that see? It's got to be more than four non-Republicans in the room. Over here. Over here. Okay. No shame. No shame in not being a Republican. Well, thank you, Frank. Um, look, the last election was not a particularly good one for Republicans in California. Um, Mitt Romney lost to Barack Obama by over 23 points. That's a margin of plus 23 on a spectrum that only has 100 points. That was the margin, plus 23. And when you lose plus 23 in a state, it affects everybody else. Half of the Republican losses in the House of Representatives were here in California. For the first time since the 1800s, Democrats have control of both the state assembly and the state senate with super majorities. Supermajorities means they can do whatever they choose without any Republican backstop. You know, I always say this to some of my friends, and a lot of people laugh, but 
it's kind of serious. I mean, do you realize that Jerry Brown is the most conservative elected Democrat in Sacramento? Now, in what universe should that ever be the case? <laughs> Jerry Brown is the backstop against a liberal Democratic legislature. And let me, let me just share with you some of the things that they, they like. And I know most of the people that serve in the legislature, and they are good people. They are well-meaning people, and to a person, they all have a great heart. They have passionately believe that their way is the correct way. Now, I don't think any political party gets it right all the time. But this last year, Jerry Brown and his team in Sacramento asked us to pass Prop 30, which raises the income tax and raises the sales tax. He asked us to do that to close the deficit. Now, I used to negotiate budgets. I can make a case that we didn't have to do that if we had restrained spending for three years, we would have been out. In budget year plus two, budget year plus three, we would have been surplus. But be that as it may, the voters of California supported the governor and passed Prop 30, one of the largest tax increases in California history. Do you know that less than 72 hours later, a Democratic state senator from Los Angeles proposed tripling the car tax? Less than 72 hours later after the voters had passed Prop 30. At least the Democratic senator in San Francisco had the good sense to wait a week before he proposed gutting Prop 13. So it does matter who's in charge. And taxes aren't the only issue we should talk about, but let me just give you an explanation on taxes. How many of you are golfers? Okay, great. How many of you remember where Phil Mickelson was complaining about the fact that he's a California resident and he pays 62% of his income in taxes? He doesn't like the fact that he's paying over $4 million in taxes and he was thinking of leaving the state. Interestingly enough, you didn't hear a chorus in Sacramento say, this is horrible. We ought to pay attention to this. What does this mean? And if he's thinking it, how many other people are thinking it? That was not the liberal reaction in Sacramento. The liberal reaction was somehow Phil Mickelson was evil because he didn't want to pay 62% of his income in taxes. Do you know who jumped to his defense? Tiger Woods. Now let me tell you a little bit about Tiger Woods. He did not go to Chafee Community College like I did. <laughs> By the way, my mother and my two brothers were Chafee Community College graduates. Tiger Woods did not go to Chafee Community College. He did not have a great education. He went to a Northern California school named Stanford. <laughs> so he was deprived of the quality education that you get at Chafee Community College. But he jumped to Phil Mickelson's defense and said, well, heck, I already left the state. In fact, he did. Tiger Woods grew up in this state. But you know what he did the week before he turned pro and signed a $40 million annual contract with Nike? He moved to Florida. Because even though he did not have a quality Chafee Community College education, he knew that 10.3% of 40 million was a lot of money. And the rate is now 13 plus. So let me walk you through some numbers. You're suffering from unemployment here. And Robert, you correctly pointed that the state is forcing down programs on you. And that's on top of thieving your realignment money. When you're in Sacramento, you call it a taking. When you're at the local level, you call it thievery. If Phil Mickelson leaves, and we lose that $4 million in tax revenue, we have to create almost 3,500 new jobs, average new jobs, just to replace that $4 million. Not to add a penny to the coffers, but to replace that $4 million. 
And for everyone like Phil Mickelson you hear about, there are scores you don't hear about. Most of you are not familiar with my personal life. Ted remembers Erica. Woman I dated in the early 2000s, left the state. I mean, I don't think you have to go that far to get away from me, but <laughs> she, <laughs> she left the state because the corporation she worked for, Fidelity National Financial, the title company, you buy a house, chances are Fidelity does your title. Bill Foley, who had a Santa Barbara-based company, thought the tax rate was too high. He took his entire company to Florida. And people are thinking about that. So who's in charge does make a difference. And it's not just tax policy, it's education policy. Are we growing charter schools? Or are we putting impediments in the way of charter schools? Are we giving parents greater choice in their children's education? Because the one thing we know is when you give people choice, they tend to migrate to where the best opportunity is. And why is that important? because it's important to improve public education, not just in the community college level, but at the K through 12 level as well. So it really matters who's in charge. And it really matters whether or not there is a competitive two-party system in this state. I absolutely believe a healthy California requires a strong and vibrant two-party system. You know, when I was a kid, Detroit was one of the richest cities in the world. One party control did not do well for that city. And one party control is not doing well for Illinois. And one party control will not do well for California. And it's not just democratic control. Wherever you have one party in total control, it tends to migrate towards its base. We have Democrats in the legislature who are aligned with unions. Some of those unions are trying to get in the marketplace certain concessions from business. If they can't get those certain concessions from business, they go to the legislature and get a bill passed to punish those businesses. I, remembered when, I remember when labor used to fight for a level playing field. Now they're using government to get an economic advantage. I believe in democracy. I believe in elections. And I'm not anti-labor union. My younger brother's a member of the labor union. He's a member of the California Teachers Association, a great teacher. But now unions say, we're having trouble winning elections. So they want to change the law in California to totally avoid elections and get through a government card check program, what they can't win at the workplace. And their allies in the legislature are supporting that. That's not healthy for California. So I was asked about the political future of California. I, I think the political future for California is we're going to have a vibrant two-party system. We don't have one right now. It was a tough election. But you know what? That was then, and we're now moving into a different election. The second midterm in a president's term, historically, is very tough for the party in power. Without making any comments about this current president, Barack Obama, if history is the norm, his party will have a difficult time in the 2014 election. In fact, if you look over the last 30 years, the party in the White House has lost seats, in the House of Representatives has lost seats, in the U.S. Senate lost seats in governorships during the second presidential midterm. There's only been one, exam, uh, one, um, one election in the last 30 years where that didn't happen. Uh, actually, two, 2002, President Bush actually, his party picked up control of the U.S. Senate, but that was after there was a party flip, and that was an irregular activity. So I think, I think 2000, and 14 could be a really good year for Republicans in California. First of all, Republicans can play a role of keeping John Boehner and the Republican majority in charge of the House of Representatives. And I always say to my friends, you know, some of whom don't think John Boehner is the most perfect guy, you know, I don't know, I've never met him, 
But what I do know is his worst day as Speaker of the Assembly is better for this, as Speaker of the House is better for this country than Nancy Pelosi will be on her best day as Speaker of the House. And every school district and every city and every county has to pass a budget. But you know what? The U.S. Senate hasn't passed a budget in years. In years. They'll probably get around to it this year because the House of Representatives insisted on language that says the Senate won't get paid if it doesn't pass a budget. I think actually doing your job ought to be the minimum standard <laughs> that we expect the public to do. And we can pick up seats in the Assembly and the State Senate because the people of California, I think, don't want to give one party total control of the state. And then let's talk about the long-term future. You know, there's this media-driven narrative that everyone in my party looks like me. But do you know there are hundreds of Hispanic Republican elected officials in this state there are hundreds of Asian American Republican elected officials in this state. There are scores of African American Republican elected officials in this state. They serve on water boards, school boards, county supervisorial positions, they're mayors, they're city councilmen. And if Republicans are smart, and I believe the Republican Party is smart, we're going to spend the next two years introducing that bench, that farm team, to the people of California. Last night I was in Los Angeles with 35 Republican Asian elected officials. And they're eager to mix it up with the other side. These are folks who've already shown an ability to win. They've already been on the ballot. They know what a tough fight's like. Now, why is that important? Because sometimes the messenger is as important as the message. And I just will not believe this media-driven narrative that there's something fundamentally wrong with Republican principles. We are the party of Abraham Lincoln. We are the party of Ronald Reagan. We are the party that believes in personal liberty and individual freedom. We're the party that, as Ronald Reagan said, understands that if you have a government big enough to give you everything you want, you have a government big enough to take away everything that you have. We believe in lower taxes and smaller government and more local control and greater parental control. And those are the Republican governing principles. And I think over the next two years, you're going to see a whole array of new messengers from every community in the state. The Republican farm team, the Republican bench, you're going to hear them enunciating those principles. I believe um, that politics is kind of a team sport. And I'm a football, I'm a football fan. Um, any San Diego Charger fans in the room? You know, I made the mistake of asking that question up in Solano County the other day. I had a couple Raiders fans want to take my head off. I have to confess, I am a season ticket holder to the San Diego Chargers. We have a great quarterback. He did not have a particularly good year. Because even the best quarterback cannot complete a pass when he's lying on his back in the grass. And we have this great farm team. And we have good elected officials. But the Republican Party itself has not been doing the blocking and tackling necessary to help win elections. So I'm actually running for state party chair. I think I'm going to be elected next Sunday. In fact, when I leave here, I'm driving, uh, driving to Sacramento. <laughs> And my commitment is that if I get that job, I'm going to spend every waking moment trying to figure out how to elect Republicans in every community. It's like football. If one blocker misses his assignment, the quarterback gets sacked. 
It means for our Republican Party to grow, we have to go into every community in every region of this state and recruit, train, and provide support to candidates from mosquito abatement to water district to utility district all the way up to governor. Doesn't mean we're going to win all those races, but as long as all of our team are pushing all of their team, we'll have a better 2014. And why is that critical? It's critical because elections do matter, and there are consequences. And the consequence of one party unchecked control in this state will not be healthy for California. And that's why I'm doing it, and that's why I encourage you all to stay involved with Robert and with Joe. Because individuals fighting the good fight in whatever elected capacity they're in are critical because there is a battle going on. And our vision of how the economy ought to be allowed to operate is fundamentally different than the other side. Doesn't mean they're bad. It just means they haven't figured out history. <laughs> Command and control did not work in the Soviet Union. Free market entrepreneurial capitalism has provided the highest standard of living for the greatest number of people in the history of the world. That's why China... <laughs> that's why China is becoming more market-based. That's why Russia is becoming more market-based. That's why most of the former Soviet Union satellites are becoming more market-based. And as the free world looked at us and saw this shining city on a hill and decided how they wanted to program after us, we have some people in this country who have evidently forgotten that command and control did not work, and they want to take us back there. We're the party of opportunity. We're the party that understands that reform actually means make things better. Any of you affected by the Environmental Quality Act up here? California Environmental Quality Act? <laughs> Do you know that if you're a billionaire developer in Los Angeles wanting to build a stadium and having given hundreds of thousands of dollars to the Democrats, you can get a special bill passed through the legislature to exempt your project from CEQA? But if you're a Hispanic businessman up in Hesperia who wants to double the size of the plant, you're kind of on your own. This party, our party, is the party that believes in opportunity. We believe that what's good for one is good for the other. And that's why I'm doing this, and that's why Robert's doing this, and that's why Joe's doing this, and that's why we all thank you for everything you've done to help empower us to do a better job, to make sure that the state that we grew up in is a state that sticks around for a few more generations. Thanks for letting me be here.